Come on, Judge, number 14, please, and if I could approach. Judge Garrett Smith on behalf of Mr. Scherf, who's present in custody. All right, good morning. Can you tell me your full name and date of birth? Craig Scherf, 7, July 17, 1966. Okay, and I do have this document in front of me that indicates that you are one of the main directors of the trial court and instead take guilty to count 13, fraudulent schemes and artifices of class 2 felony in violation of the statutes contained in the plea, as well as count 16, illegal control of an enterprise, a class 3 felony in violation of the statutes contained in the plea. Both of these offenses committed honor between January 1 of 2015 and January 7 of 2017. They are both non-dangerous and not repetitive under the criminal code. Is that what you wish to do? Yes, ma'am. Have you had any drugs, alcohol, or medication in the last 24 hours? No, ma'am. Highest grade that you completed in this school? 17. Any difficulty reading or understanding English? No, ma'am. Let me admit that the upper left-hand corner of the plea is that your name, date of birth, and do they appear correctly? Yes, ma'am. If you look down side of the plea, are those your initials? That's the all of the number of paragraphs. Yes, ma'am. On the last page, you have your signature. And did you read through the document with your lawyer before you signed it? Did you discuss it in detail with him? Was he able to answer any of the questions that you may have had about the plea? Were there any promises made to you that are not contained in the written terms of the document? Do you agree with everything in the document? Do you understand that if you're guilty, you will have a conviction on your record for both of these offenses? Yes? Do you have the answer out loud? Okay. Has anybody forced you, threatened you, or forced you in any way in which you to enter into the plea today? No. No? Okay. The sentencing possibilities that exist for the offenses under the law are as follows. They are both probation eligible. For the Class 2 felony, probation could be for up to 7 years. For the Class 3 felony, probation could be for up to 5 years. You could also receive a year flat in the county jail as a condition of probation for each of the offenses. You could also go to the Department of Corrections. For the Class 3 felony, the absolute minimum is 2 years. The absolute max is 8.7 per year. The number of sentences is 3 1⁄2 years. For the Class 2 felony, the absolute minimum is 3 years. The absolute max is 12 1⁄2 years. The presumptive sentence is 5 years. If you were to go to the Department of Corrections, you would also be required to serve a term of community supervision. That would occur on consecutive to any prison sentence imposed. It would be equal to one-seventh of the total prison sentence imposed. And then if you were violated in any of the terms of community supervision, you could be returned back to the Department of Corrections to serve out the remainder of your term. If your conduct caused economic loss in any way, you could be required to pay restitution. Maximum fine that can be imposed here is $150,000 plus. In the plea agreement, it says an 84% surcharge. That's actually not correct. It's an 83%. Any objection to me making that modification? No, Judge. Okay. Plus an 83% surcharge. You are also going to have to pay any additional assessments that are required under the law in terms of a victim assessment as well as a probation assessment that should be included in the plea agreement here. You're also going to have to provide a DNA sample for law enforcement identification purposes. Do you understand all the sentencing possibilities that exist for these offenses under the law? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, it looks like you are agreeing with the state in Count 13 that you will go to the Department of Corrections. You will pay restitution in an amount not to exceed $100,000. There will be no additional grant assessed to that count. As it relates to Count 16, you also have a term of supervised probation, which will include white-collar terms. That will begin upon your actual release from confinement in Count 13. If you were to reject probation, any term of incarceration would have to run consecutive to the prison you're agreeing to for Count 13. You will pay restitution in an amount not to exceed $100,000. By agreeing to these terms, the state would then be going to use these Count 20 for Count 14, 15, and 17 through 29 of your charging document. The state also agrees not to charge you with additional charges arising from, number one, your use of Dr. McKenzie's identifying information to purchase medication between the dates listed in the plea agreement, or two, your misrepresentation regarding licensure and ability to bill insurance for chiropractic services between the dates listed in your plea agreement. Is that your understanding of the agreement that you've reached with the state? 
allowing the court to consider any aggravating factors that may have been alleged by the state for purposes of enhancing your sentence, do you understand both of those things? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in order to proceed with your plea of guilty, you would have to give up or waive your constitutional rights, and I know you were present on my chain earlier when I went over those, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, do you have any questions about your constitutional rights? No, ma'am. Do you understand all of them? Yes, ma'am. And are you wanting to waive and give them up today so you can plead guilty? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you were also present uh, on the chain <coughs> earlier when I went over the victim, I mean, not the victim, the immigration advisor. Yes, ma'am. Okay, any questions about that? No, ma'am. And recognizing those potential consequences, do you still want to plead guilty in your case today? Yes, ma'am. Now, once I accept the plea and enter it of record, you're not going to be able to withdraw unless it is to correct and manifest injustice. And the only avenue to appeal that you would have followed from sentencing would be to file a petition for post conviction relief. Filed after you filed within 90 days of your sentencing, otherwise you would lose the right to do so. Do you understand both of those things? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then, as we count 13, fraudulent schemes and artifices, a class 2 felony in violation of the statutes contained in the plea, as well as count 16, illegal control of an enterprise, a class 3 felony in violation of the statutes contained in the plea. Both of these offenses committed on or between January 1 of 2015 and January 7 of 2017 are both non dangerous and non repetitive under the criminal code. How do you plead, sir? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Factual basis for both. Yes, Judge. Um, you, Your Honor, with regard to both counts, the same dates of violation string. So between January 1st of 2015 and January 17th, January 7th of 2017, both events occurred in Maricopa County, uh, Arizona. With regard to count uh, 13, um, my client obtained a benefit pursuant to a, a fraudulent scheme, um, um, uh, putting forth false, false pretenses. Specifically, he was running a uh, medical uh, laser um, facility the false pretense was that there was medical staff on duty and there was not. Um, and the, the customers that came, at least some of them, weren't in the belief that there was medical supervision of all the things that was going on on staff, and that was not the case. Um, with regard to count 16, the control of the legal enterprise, he um, uh, controlled that enterprise, the laser business, uh, pursuant to, and it was obtained or controlled or run through uh, racketeering, which would be the illegal conduct that was just outlined in um, count 13. And did you hear what your lawyer said that you did for both of these offenses? Yes, ma'am. And do you agree that that's what happened? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Anything to add or correct to the factual basis from the state? No corrections, Judge, and the original rights have been complied with. Okay, so the court just finds there has been a factual uh, basis for the plea that it has been made known to me. It's other than the involvement, but I will accept the plea and enter it as record. Uh, sentencing will be September 13th. September 13th. How does that work for everybody? Just can we approach briefly? Yes. Yeah.
September 13th uh, to give uh, both sides time to prepare any aggravation or mitigation that they want to use in the sentencing hearing. The actual sentencing date will be October 6th, and that will be at 9 a.m. Uh, here in my division. Uh, the time set for that will be an hour. Uh, that way both sides can present any witnesses that they may want the court to consider <coughs> on that date. Just clarify, they won't need to transport him on September 13th. This yeah. is non appearance date. Correct. Okay. Should it just be kind of a date that we use as an anchor in the minute entry to make sure that that report's done so you have okay. adequate time to prepare your mitigation? Thank you, Judge. And just, just for the record, Mario Delacrosse is in the courtroom. He did not look at the mistakes this morning. Okay, thank you. I will note that for the record. And of course, he's invited to join us for the law. Okay, Number 12.